Well, good afternoon, everyone. So good that we could be together today. I uh, just want to let you know that I am on call today. So uh, worst case scenario, I need to go uh, running out of here. We'll just end quickly. Um, announcement wise, uh, just that we have worship on Sunday and then on the 18th is Confirmation Sunday. I know I mentioned that before. I just invite you to be here and be a, a part of that with our uh, our confirmads. Uh, also that night is family night uh, out at Ottawa. So just uh, look to your uh, church bells. That's full of information. Um, that'll tell you what's going on. So yesterday at Bible study, we uh, got to talking at the end um, and we just were talking about the liturgy and about uh, the creeds and uh, all those things. And I was uh, asked then to maybe at some point just kind of talk about what we talked about. And so I thought uh, today would be a good time to do that. And what I want to talk about really is the liturgy that we use, the prayers that we say, the, the creed and all that. And so I just want to take a few minutes to just kind of walk through our liturgy. What does it really mean? What, what are, are the things that we say? You know, we, we talked in, in Bible study uh, about when we say the confession and forgiveness. Are we saying it because it's something we've said for 50 years or 20 years or however long we've been saying it? Are we saying it because the person next to me in the pew says it? Or when we hear the words, are we saying, are we hearing them as Christ talking to us, as God talking to us, and are we saying them back that way? And there are some things that you may see me do uh, in worship uh, that um, you wonder why we do that. And so I just, I'm going to take a, a, a few minutes to just kind of tell you what what these things are and, and how we should approach our liturgy. You know, we, we always start uh, our service after that bell rings with the confession and forgiveness. And it starts out, uh, it can be various ways, but usually it's blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives our sins, whose mercy endures forever. The sign of the cross, uh, that is a question I get. When the, the, the pastor makes the sign of the cross, it is an indication for you uh, as, as a baptized believer to remember your baptism and to make the sign of the cross yourself. Um, there's only a couple times where we do it in the service. Um, the confession and forgiveness is one. You'll see that I do that on Sunday. And so I invite you to remember your baptism in that way by remembering that you are marked by the cross of Christ forever. But then we hear those words, words of tradition for us, Almighty God to whom all hearts are open, all desires known from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. It's a prayer. It's a prayer to God. And so when you hear those words, feel them in here. And then we, we say, let us confess our sin. And this is where the, the interactive part comes, I think, for you. I know when I recite this, this confession. I think to myself, am I, it is I that is seeking forgiveness. We confess that we have turned from you or we confess that we are captive to sin. 
that we cannot free ourselves, that we have sinned against you. So when you say those words, come with that confession. Not just because it's something we've said and we just recite that, but think to yourself, why am I coming to God? Because I am seeking forgiveness. The confession and forgiveness is a chance for us to start our service in repentance, in seeking God and his forgiveness, in saying that we are sinners, and that we have sinned, and that we ask for forgiveness. It's not just words that we use, but it is seeking God and seeking that forgiveness. I know I've been asked before the singing of liturgy and, and all of that, and it is very tradition to our church to sing liturgy, and there is meaning behind it. So I invite you on Sunday when we sing it to really listen in peace. Let us pray to the Lord in our peace, in internal peace, in this place peace. And then for the peace from above and for our salvation. Again, another petition. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God. We're seeking that peace to God. We're giving that to God. And then for this place, this holy house where we gather. And for all who are here and all who are worshiping and praising. We pray to God. We seek God's guidance. And then we sing, this is the feast. And that really is just saying, we are here to celebrate you, Christ, that this is the feast of the victory of God. This is the foretaste of the feast to come, of eternal, uh, the eternal meal, the blessing and the honor and the glory. And so that's what we raise to Christ in our Kyrie and in our hymn of praise. And before the gospel, alleluia. We are raising up the gospel. We are, are standing in honor of the gospel. We are proclaiming the gospel of Christ. And that's what that gospel acclamation does for us. And then the creed. I think sometimes, in all honesty, we stand up and we say the creed because we've said it for so long. So I invite you to sit, sit with that. Uh, and maybe before worship during the prelude is a good time to sit with the bulletin and look at this. But really think about the creed as you say the words. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I, I personally believe in him. That's why I say this creed. Not because everyone around me does, not because for years and years I've been told to, but because I believe in God, because I believe in Jesus Christ, and I believe in the Holy Spirit. It is in that belief that we say that creed, that we take time to hear those words. And then probably one of the most important parts of our service, and that is our time where we are given the grace of God through Holy Communion. I said to Bible study class yesterday as we were talking about it, when you come to the altar railing, you are coming in the presence of God. You are kneeling at his altar. You are being given the body and the blood. Don't come because it's something that you think you have to do. You come because you are seeking that forgiveness that you are discerning in you that this is where I need to be. And I invited the, the Bible study class to do this, and I invite all of you, when you receive the body and the blood of Christ, look up, look up at that cross. Look up at that stained glass image of Jesus and know that you are here to be forgiven. 
that the body and blood of Christ is given and shed for you. So there are so many things in the liturgy that I invite you to just sit with, to hear. Whether you are of the Lutheran tradition, when you watch this devotion or another congregation, you still have those elements within your service in whatever manner. Whether it be the creed, whether it be uh, a confession and a forgiveness, or the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed, sacred. It is a prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. It is a prayer where we are asking for forgiveness. Forgive us our trespasses and then allow us to forgive the trespasses of others. There is so much sacredness in the words that we say. Not just simply to say them because that's how we worship, but to feel them and to know them and to understand them. I invite you, if you have more questions about the liturgy or what we do, reach out to me. I would love to have a conversation with you and maybe one of these Sundays we'll have a, um, a, a temple talk uh, after worship in about some of these things if we have some more interest. But just sit with the liturgy the next time you have it and really feel the words as you say them. And if you feel like you're just saying them to say them, I invite you not to say them this time. That you just pray that God will lead you to what is right and what is just. So that when you do confess your sins, you feel yourself in the presence of God confessing those sins. When you come to the railing, don't do it because everyone around you is doing it. Do it because you feel the presence of God coming into you. And do it for the right reasons. Would you pray with me? Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of gift of worship, the gift of fellowship. We thank you for sending your son to this earth, to live amongst us, to, to teach us, and ultimately to go to the cross for us. Father God, be with us as we worship, as we say the words of our liturgy, as we say our confession, as we pray to you, May they ever resonate in our hearts. And as we come to your table by the gift of grace that you've given us, may you be present in our lives. May we be there seeking you and knowing that as we look up at that cross, we look up at the cross that saves us, that forgives us of our sin. God, we lift up to you this country. We just seek peace. We seek a calm where there is hatred, where there is division, where there is hurt. Just mend us. Father God, we pray for the natural disasters that are affecting us, that the fires and the hurricanes and floods and storms. Bring a calm across this country, God, and help us restore the earth that you gave us. God, we lift up to you our community as we are in the midst of this pandemic still. God, we seek your healing hand. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy. Keep all those that hurt God healthy. Heal their pain. Ease their fear. Relieve their anxiety. God, we continue to lift up our teachers and our students as they continue to navigate education. Give them the strength to 
either be in the classroom or be online and still learn and still know that they are cared for and that you are ever present. God, we thank you for all the joys that you've given us. We rejoice in you, in your son. Father God, most of all, I ask that you hear the prayers of your people, that you hear what's on their hearts. All of this we lift to you, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you for being here. It is an honor that I have this time with you. I so enjoy it. I hope God continues to bless you today, that he wraps his arms around you. And until we see each other again, which I should do right there, until we see each other again, take care of yourselves. God bless. Bye for now.